perfectly decent question, and I, I wouldn't quarrel with the numbers. And I would say that that, that, that is an alternative, for example, that my successor uh, may wish to employ, because on balance, I would rather own uh, an index fund than, than, than carry treasury bills. I would, I would say that if we'd instituted that policy in 2007 or 8, uh, we might have been in a different position in terms of, of our ability to move uh, late in 2008 or 2009. Uh, so it, it has certain it has certain execution problems with hundreds of billions of dollars than it does if you were having a similar policy with a billion or two billion or something of the sort. But it's a perfectly it's perfectly rational observation, and certainly looking back on ten years uh, of a bull market, it 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 really jumps out at you. But I would argue that that uh, that uh, uh, if if you were working smaller numbers, it it would make a lot of sense. And if you're working with large numbers, it's it it might well make sense in the future at Berkshire to operate that way. You know, we committed $10 billion a week ago, and there are conditions under which, and they're not, they're not remote, they're not likely in any given week or month or year, but, but there are conditions under which we could spend $100 billion very, very quickly. Uh, uh, and if we did, if those conditions existed, it would be the capital very well deployed and much better than in an index fund. And so we've been, uh, we're operating on the basis that we will get chances to deploy capital. They will come in clumps in all likelihood. And uh, they will come when other people don't want to allocate capital. Charlie, what do you think about it? Well, I plead guilty to being a little more conservative with the cash than other people. And, but I think that's all right. Uh, we could have put all the money into a lot of securities that would have done better than the S&P with 2020 hindsight. Remember, we had all that extra cash all that period if something had come along in the way of opportunities and so on. I don't think it's a sin to be a little strong on cash when you're as big a company as we are. Uh, we don't have to. I watched Harvard use the last ounce of their cash, including all their prepaid tuition from the parents, and plunge it into the market at exactly the wrong moment and make a lot of forward commitments to private equity. And they suffered like two or three years of absolute agony. We don't plus, want to be like Harvard. Plus timber and a whole bunch of things. I mean, plus timber and, I mean... It, yeah, it, yeah, we're not going to change. No. <laughs> we, we, we do like having a lot of money to be able to operate very fast and very big. And we don't... And maybe we won't... We know we won't get those opportunities frequently. I don't think... Uh, it, certainly, you know, in the next... You know in the next... 20 or 30 years, there'll be a two or three times when it'll be raining gold and all you have to do is go outside. But uh, uh, we don't know when they will happen, and, and we have a lot of money to commit. And I would say that if you told me I had to either carry short-term treasury bills or have index funds and just let that money be invested in America generally, I would take the index funds. But we still have hopes. And the one thing you should very definitely understand about Berkshire is that we run the business in a way that we think is consistent with serving shareholders who have virtually all of their net worth in Berkshire. I happen to be in that position myself, but I would do it that way under any circumstances. We have a lot of people who trust us, who, who uh, really have disproportionate amounts of Berkshire compared to their net worth, uh, if you were to follow standard investment procedures, and and uh, uh, we want to make money for everybody, but we want to make very very sure that we don't lose permanently money from anybody for anybody that buys our stock somewhere around intrinsic business value to begin with. We we just have an we have an aversion to having a million plus shareholders, maybe as many as two million and having a lot of them uh, 
ever really lose money if they're willing to stay with us for a while. And we know how people behave if, when, when the world generally is, is uh, upset. And uh, they want to be with something. I think they want to be with something that they feel is like the Rock of Gibraltar. And, and uh, we have a, we have a disp we have a real disposition toward that group. Jonathan? 